Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is where we look at the strategies and tactics of the game of Hero Clicks. Look at me. Now look back at your phone. Now look at me. I am on your phone, doing this podcast, in a wonderful Tahiti shirt. But you can't see that because you can't look at me. <laughs> All right, that's that's my Old Spice voice as best as I could for, for right now. Hopefully in better audio uh, for everybody out there. Uh, this is uh, going to be a, a microcast. And I uh, just got off of the great game between uh, starting over podcast and push the region uh, versus... Uh, Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> Starting over podcast, Glass Cabinet Films versus Push the Regent. Uh, so it was a awesome game. Uh, I look forward to, to more of those games in the future. They were just beyond fun. Uh, so you might be saying, like, Dark Logos, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? Are you going to gloat? No. No, there's really nothing to gloat about. Um, are, are you going to talk smack? Ah, oh, heck no. Those dudes are cool. Um, they're, they're chill and nothing else. So, so what are we going to talk about? Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, mistakes made on my part. Uh, and, and you might say like you won, you know, okay, let's, let's be honest. Uh, there are things in, in 2v2 land. I haven't talked about 2v2 land because 2v2 land does a lot with your opponent. And so you, you might say like, hey, uh, you know, I, I think I can do this, 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 and this. And your opponent would be like, no, I'm going to go do this. And you might say, is that a slide at Ryan? No, it's not. Um, because he did some actions that I, I just didn't see that were good ideas. Okay. So this is a, a really brief recap of just some of my insights and and I would also encourage you if this is your first first video of mine uh that you're you're listening to uh you know go back to episode you know, about 25 25 is still relevant um and you can get a whole lot uh from that okay uh, you'll have hours upon hours of content for you to uh gush over digest uh laugh about me and uh whatever else First off, in, in 2v2s, uh, some people might have noticed some of the comments about Ryan is, let me go find my figures, is the formation, if you, if you look at our formation versus Rob and Jay's formation, Jay and Rob's formation, is they had their team separate, um, which each of those 500 points operated fully on their own and to really good effect, but they operated on their own. At the other end, uh, our team was designed for certain things to happen at the beginning of the game. Now, note, you don't always have this luxury. This is this is really just me having time. And I, I wasn't kidding. I played like four or five games before we actually played the game. And the other team that Jay and Rob played had won a couple. So d don't think that the Magog shenanigans is like auto win. If if Magog gets a critical miss, definitely it's a problem. Definitely when you're on Thor. If if Magog gets a critical miss on any of that and, and you're not in prop range. Or what I also did as I had pretty much pushed the region, burned the majority of their props so that Magog missed. Uh but if if that happened, then you're you're in trouble. So anyway, going on. When we look at the formation, I had to have Ryan perplex up Superman. And he could only do it on his turn. He couldn't do it on my turn. Okay. When he perplexed up Superman, uh, I needed that stat in the expectation that I wasn't going to get hit. Okay. And I also was on the expectation that I was going to have X or Y uh, perplexes available. The other thing is you can look later on where I move right before uh, Magog clears for his first uh, Annihilation Wave. Uh, I have Cypher right behind him pushed to give uh, Magog a perplex on his damage so his damage is capped. Okay, so these are the things where you're looking out for your teammate and you're doing things for your offense. Okay, the next thing is, is in my scouting 
push the regions team, I noticed like, oh yeah, they had Sharon Carter. That like in, in all honesty, if not for Cypher, that game would have been completely different. Don't don't think like, oh well, push the region is slacking on their team building. No, there is literally nothing. Nothing that we could have done other than have all our wild cards copy Superman TA to do against Sharon, Sharon Carter. And yeah, we could still throw Magog out there, mind you, and, and Magog would do what he does. But every other shot that we had would be dedicated to trying to kill Sharon Carter. And then we have to deal with, with, with what's left. And, and people don't realize... <sighs> In all of my scenarios that I played before the live game, the the best scenarios were I got Iron Man off the field, I got Thor off the field, and I got Crystal off the field early. In the actual game, we got crippled Iron Man, Crystal's on the field, and Thor got off the field once Magog did his crazy freaking raffle stomp on top of his head, okay? But Crystal got off some key shots that were never in my scenarios because most of the time in aggressive placement, I had killed Crystal. Okay. I didn't kill Crystal this time or damage her. I went for Iron Man. That was a mistake. Even though I knew in my simulations, like kill Crystal and what happened? Running shot, psychic blast and push running shot, psychic blast, you know, so there, you know, so you, you need to sort of be mindful of targets. What are your priority targets? And we pretty much pick the priority targets, right? But you have to inform your, your teammate what your priority targets are. Because Crystal was more of a priority target than Morgan Le Fay. Because Crystal could come up and cripple Superman or Magog really early. And yeah, we can get back to the medic, but those... They were advancing fast. They had a Blitzkrieg team. If they held, if they just stood back and waited for us to come to them, they were they were screwed. They they knew that. They they were more screwed because pretty much we have all the TK. Okay, so that's the other thing is you have TK. Does your partner have TK? If your partner doesn't have TK, and you know they're going to need TK. Try to put them in a position that they're safe. And, you know, at the end, I was sort of, that was hubris. That was poor form, where I, I took an action, a TK. Yeah, I had the TK Iron Man. I shouldn't have done that. I, I regret that, and I apologize for that. Um, that was rude. Um, I should have just shot with Eradicator. Uh, sometimes you, and I'll say this, sometimes in your head, and those things that go off that you're like, man, that's amusing. But you don't really think about, like, okay, this is this is the cost of you doing it. Um, anyway, going on, I think the the next element that you can look from the the team play uh, is who has what support and where. We had a, a a nice amount of perplex and prob and giving willpower and at the beginning of the game when I said you know push claw he was like but Alfred's not by him so I can heal. Okay, so he was under the assumption that he was going to need Alfred to heal, but he forgot about uh, pretty much Harvey Dent giving willpower. Okay, at the same time, when Ryan put up barrier, he put up barrier up at like a, a lip at the end. Um, and I'll have to talk to him another time and find out why, because um, he could have saw something that I didn't, uh, or he was trying to. Uh, give a little bit more protection to Eradicator, I, I guess. Yeah, he's probably trying to give more protection to Eradicator from a certain angle attack from, uh, yeah, from Thor. But uh, anyway, the big issue comes in is like that one lip stopped me from doing a ranged combat expert with Eradicator uh, because I had that on my gauntlet. And you can track the gauntlet dials if you want to, but it's like a two-hour game, so I'm not even going to go back and try to re-listen to all that uh, right now. 
so be mindful of, you know, your use of perplex or per prob or outwit. Like we had one outwit and that was Tony Stark and he had to be protected like he was the freaking king of China. And I know there is no king of China. I'm just giving it as a metaphor, okay? All right. So if you look at our barrier placement, it's there to make sure that you cannot draw a line of fire onto Tony Stark, onto Magog, onto uh, Green Lantern, and onto Claw. All four of those pieces are essential for us to kill Thor. Thor had to die. Thor pushing, I knew it was going to happen to, but Thor pushing didn't slow anything down. It, it just guaranteed that he wasn't going anywhere. But uh, you ha I, we had to kill Thor. Anyway, after you, you look at our setup, you can see that the way that I placed it, yes, as tyrannical as that is, allow for us to maximize our long game plan, not just the start of the game. Because think about it, if his figures, and I ran this in my scenario, his figures on one side, my figures on the other side, and early game, I need a perplex from his Alfred, but it's on the other side, but he's not going to move his Alfred over just so that he can perplex my Superman or perplex my Eradicator. You see? Because he has plans to do X, Y, and Z with his Alfred. All right. But by mixing the units up properly, you can see a lot more synergy. Now, again, this is not a slam at, you know, Ray and, uh, sorry, Robin J. Okay. This is not a slam at Push to Regen. Because, again, if you look at their team setup, all of their team is very aggressive. So it, it didn't placement mattered but placement wasn't like oh my gosh placement's crucial but if you look at our team compared to theirs they have six dedicated ta attackers to our four because green lantern is not a dedicated attacker and claw is not a dedicated attacker they both do tk and barrier that's what they do that's what they're there for you know in game they're attackers but not mid game not when the most pressure's on Okay, and you're definitely knowing Alfred isn't going to go in there and take a shot on anyone. So we're we're very dependent on Superman. So let's let's look at what Push to Region did really well. When they took Superman off the field, that was a good play. Okay, I knew that was going to happen. I didn't want that to happen that early. I wanted Superman to at least KO someone or at least cripple someone. He crippled. He crippled Iron Man, but he didn't really cripple, cripple Iron Man. Like, Iron Man had outwit. That's why I had to push out uh, Eradicator so Eradicator could kill Iron Man because that outwit would screw our team yeah, so bad. You know, if, if we lose a perplex, if we lose a prob because Iron Man just goes over there, yeah, that's, that's a problem. So you have to, to be mindful of, of constant threats. But when they killed Superman, what, why was that a good idea? Well, first off, I couldn't get Superman back to a medic. Okay, there were pockets for Superman to hide behind, and then they would have to plow through all the other characters just to kill Superman. Okay, the next thing is by killing Superman, Superman was on hypersonic speed and toughness. He could just pop up, grab an object, smack somebody, like, uh, let's take, for example, Morgan Le Fay. Smack Lord Morgan Le Fay, now Morgan Le Fay is hurt. Yeah, she can get shape change or whatever. You know, Morgan Le Fay's taking six. You know, I zip, you know, somewhere else and then get TK back in, you know, another turn or, you know, or I can TK back in uh, with Enchantress if I, I get the right angle. But I have uh, Superman go behind Enchantress. So... There, there's a lot of things that can be be done. So by them killing them, killing Superman, they they took off pretty much a very mobile four damage off the field for a giving me a plus one stat with Eradicator. Okay, now think about that. Eradicator is now twelve attack, four damage, uh, twelve movement, and a, a nineteen D. Is after after we cripple after actually after we crippled uh, Tony I mean uh, Iron Man was there anybody that can get past all that Oh heck no Oh no That's why Iron Man was one of the first to die because he was the only one with running shot pulse wave Okay Who else could probably get past all that 
Well, Thor could with a perplex from Morgan Le Fay. That's why Thor was the next to die. Okay, one of the top list to die. Okay, oh, who else can do something that does massive damage? No one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if I had to sacrifice Superman early on so that I can get Thor, I'll do that. If I had to sacrifice Superman so I can get Iron Man and Thor, I'll do that. Even though that leaves us down uh, an attacker. We have three attackers, but we take out two, so it's three attackers against four. They still have the aggressive momentum, but we took out their main war engine. Okay, and so go back to to last episode, and you talk. You'll hear me talk about war engines. Okay, and and then you'll see that war engines are not always just attackers, and they're not always just support pieces. All right. Now, the other thing is, if they ever made a play on Cipher, we were done. And I'm going to elaborate on that. Cipher is giving my entire our entire team Avengers Initiative because for heck, am I going to copy? Um, what is it? A uh, shield or avengers forget that okay we don't need shield we already have enough stat modification but if i copy shield we can't see them completely different game okay so th them putting sharon carter on there is a unknown that can drop on you and in all honesty i and they're good guys and i know why they didn't do it but if I was them, I would have done it. I would have dropped Beta Ray Bill on there. Um, the main reason is once Sharon Carter is given everyone that's adjacent stealth, Beta Ray Bill just ensures that that advantage doesn't go away. And it's a whole new game. All that Avenger initiative jazz doesn't mean bunk. Okay, now now I have to deal with the fact that Thor can be four or five squares from my starting area, and I can't do anything about it. So I have to sacrifice probably Superman. We would have to probably sacrifice Superman. Eradicator has to, I mean, not Eradicator. Uh, Magog has to kill Sharon Carter. That has to be like, kill Thor, kill Sharon Carter, kill another figure if you can that's it like you 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 can't do anything else and then i i you know i don't have to go after um beta ray bill then but man that just changes things okay so you know big ups to them good good pick good 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 pick okay so Let's let's wrap some things up because this is actually a ramble and this is just mainly after game thoughts and uh, I really wanted to have something for everybody that was still up and they were you know reading Twitter or whatever else uh, or if you you know you wake up the next day and you're like hey you know I heard that game happen let me check out Dark Logos's channel uh, in the end game I will say this the number one key thing about 2v2s is morale. Magog is a morale killer, among other things. But Magog is a morale killer. Now, where Rob and Jay were wise at is that they kept their morale up. They made jokes. They commented about what was going on. They didn't really quit. Okay? They never really quit inside. And that's one of those key things that you need in a tournament. And there, you know, it's... Yes, it's, it's televised, okay? But at the same time, you can't televise your initial, you know, emotional response and, and be like, oh, yeah, game face on, you know, I'm in the actor's studio, okay? That doesn't work. And if you're live in a tournament, your opponent is going to tell by your vocal pattern, by your nonverbals, by your your posture, you know, are you demoralized? Did did that one attack that your opponent thought did nothing do more than what you thought it did? Did you just ruin your opponent's entire next four-turn plan? And I know that's ridiculous for 2v2s for folks that are like, you have a four-turn plan? In general, yes, I try to. Um, you can think farther than, than that in clicks, but dice makes too much stuff random. 
Um, whereas you can sort of say, if three turns from now, if such and such figure is alive, then I'm in trouble. Or if such and such figure is dead, I'm great. But anyway, going back, but having morale allows you to clearly look at your situation and assess, am I really losing? Okay. Uh, once they lost Iron Man and Thor, then yeah, they were really losing. But up until that point, they knew that they were going to deal with an aggressive game and that they had to kill as much as quickly as possible. Um, as it, so, like, let's take, for example, uh, when they went in, and you can see when, when they pushed Crystal to kill Superman, that was like whatever accepted. Then when Crystal was free again, do the super quake. Do as much damage to the support as possible. Okay, that quake did damage. All right. So there was constant pressure because that quake got rid of a prop. Actually, yeah, I think it got rid of two props. It got rid of all our prop. So that quake was a game changer. And if you look at it, that gave them momentum again, even though they weren't fully aware of it, is who has theme prop, who has probability control now? They do. Who doesn't? We push the region. Push the region has prob, and starting over podcast and glass cabinet films do not. Oh, Eradicator gets it very randomly, and only affects on on my turn. So that's that's a big deal. So you have to you keep your morale up, okay? <sighs> All right. So below you'll see a, a link to my blog. Uh, new content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This Friday, no lie, the content's going to be late um, because I got to go to bed. Normally, I, I would have this stuff typed up, um, but I don't. Uh, so it might just be more about uh, what's going on here, but I got like a viewer email, so I might just do viewer email. Uh, check out uh, Push the Region. Uh, they have their own uh, webpage. Uh, they're a great podcast. They are not a strategy and tactics podcast, but they really talk about real life application of figures with their common justice and their actual games that they play between the two of them. And I even learned from their games. And this is not me blowing smoke. This is me being honest. I learn a lot from their games because they say some things in there that I didn't think of and they bring up some nuance that I didn't think of. And they also have some team combinations that I'm not going to front. I just wouldn't play. All right. Uh, check out glass cabinet films because most likely if you already are listening to me, you're already watching glass cabinet films, but check out his webpage and check out his uh, Twitter. I think it's like at glass cabinet YT or something like that. And uh, Push the Region is at Push the Region. I am at Start Over Pod. You know, all names can't be winners. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so thanks for listening. And remember, we all have to start over sometime.